And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we gave you some straight-up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games. Hi folks, my name is Falcon, and today we are talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. So just get a couple things out of the way. All the footage we have here was captured on an Xbox Series X, and well, this wasn't really a game we were looking forward to. Our expectations were kind of at an all-time low. I mean, you heard me in various lists declare a little bit of skepticism at the same time some potential optimism but like I've generally not been warm to this one you know because the Avengers game so I'm happy to report that it's actually pretty good it kind of seems like Guardians of the Galaxy uh, is Square Enix trying to do right by the people who are like in my opinion correctly turned off by the Avengers uh, this game it, instead of being always online instead of being a games as a service mess like so much crap is nowadays guardians is kind of just a straightforward single player adventure without all that extra crap and the thing that we were most worried about going in was how the game played the trailers didn't really make it clear exactly how combat would work and what they did show didn't really seem super unique great or exciting but those were trailers and we've actually got our hands in the game now so we've got a much clearer picture about what it is and it's actually pretty unique at least in terms of the combat anyways the best way i can describe it is is a mix of like Uncharted and the Final Fantasy VII remake. It's a linear action adventure game with everything that that entails. There's a lot of platforming, there's light puzzle solving, there's combat, there's big set piece moments where you're like running from something and all that stuff looks really familiar. But then the game does and incorporates some team-based tactical elements from role-playing games along with some telltale adventure game-like moments. Um, And that stuff sounds like it could be a mess all mashed together, but wow, does it work a lot better than you would expect so let's start with the basics you play as peter quill or star lord the leader of the guardians of the galaxy the marvel sci-fi superhero team the guardians in this game are pretty obviously based on their depictions in the 2014 film so they kind of look like off-model versions of these familiar characters it's not quite as jarring as in the avengers game but it does take a little bit of time getting used to uh you and your team of space weirdos are an already established group in this story and there's a little more comic accurate history incorporated in the backstory here so even though they pretty much look the same as the movie guardians the actual details are a little different uh while the trailers made it look like it would be pure nonsense there are some serious story moments and emotional bits as well like more than i was expecting at the very least the story is surprisingly good especially in the later sections of the game i don't want to get too much into spoilers but things get pretty interesting at a certain point now again from the trailers my biggest concern with the story was that it was going to be annoying that it would be trying to capture what works about the movies but not quite get it right a and that's sometimes the case peter quill can definitely be a little annoying at times but otherwise it's pretty fun the other four guardians have great voice acting their constant bickering is mostly amusing instead of ear grading basically it's not like how the guardians were presented in ultimate alliance 3 like that was really cringy and this is so sometimes a little cringy but not so much and while i think it's mostly good there is a lot of dialogue in the game like i said there's definitely a bit of a telltale dna woven into this thing there's big sections of the game where you're mostly just talking and that's about it it definitely gives the game a more movie-like feeling but it can go a little bit long between major combat sections and that feels a little weird the opening is probably the worst regarding this though it takes a long time before you actually get into the meat of the combat like you're not getting into long consistent fights until around chapter four which is about three hours into the game so it's a game with a slow start but it gets more interesting as it goes along so keep that in mind uh, when i first started playing the game i was a little shocked by how weak star lord's guns feel and his movement abilities are kind of limited uh, it didn't feel great but after playing for a while i started to understand what they were going for star lord's supposed to feel kind of weak because he is what makes this game different from other third person action games is you play the role of team leader strategically ordering the different guardians to use their unique attacks and take out enemies and they're kind of incentivizing you to understand that by making star lord not the most powerful thing ever all four of the main 
guys have kind of a general role in the team. Groot can root enemies to the ground. Rocket is good at splash damage. Drax does heavy stagger damage, leaves enemies vulnerable. And Gamora is good at doing heavy damage to single targets. Every character starts off with just one ability, but eventually you have a full team of everybody having like four each, including yourself. So by the end, you have 20 different possible moves to combine and maximize the amount of damage you inflict. So while at first you're just kind of kicking around little balls that require very little strategy, later in the game you'll be facing off against a bunch of armor guys, snipers, healers, and all sorts of monsters that require special strategies to take down. And it all goes down in real time, which is sometimes a little overwhelming because you have to think about a lot. But at the end of the day, it's not super complex and just spamming certain attacks will get you through normal difficulty just fine. Uh, the way combat plays out does do a great job at making you feel like the leader of a team. And that's great because the teamwork aspect is basically part of everything you do in the game. You're constantly mediating arguments between team members. You're making decisions that sometimes affect how certain missions play out. Now, the changes aren't always huge, but they do feel meaningful in the moment. So that's, I mean, a big plus in terms of what they're going for. They, it's mostly a success. Between combat encounters, you're generally funneled through levels in kind of a linear way. Sometimes you can explore little nooks and crannies for scrap or to craft upgrades to unlock a new costume or whatever, but in general, it's pretty straightforward. Puzzles are solved by either shooting things or ordering your team to do things in a certain order to achieve the goal. Sometimes it will end up feeling really satisfying, even if it's all fairly easy. Uh, honestly, it's just nice to have somebody else move the big object instead of pushing it yourself that's kind of fun and it emphasizes your role as team later it's having a team that makes this game stand out and the best parts of the game are the sections where it really feels like you're combining all your team's abilities to destroy enemies uh when the game just lets you go nuts and fight tons of enemies in large areas that is when it's at its absolute best because you actually have to think about what you're doing in these sections at least to some extent and probably my only complaint about those is that they're relatively few and far between it's a similar complaint that I had with Eidos Montreal's previous game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, actually. There's just not enough combat. It's not that bad, but it sometimes feels like you go a long time without fighting anything. And then maybe there's a few long combat sections all grouped together, and then you're back to some short combat sections again. The pacing feels a, a little off. You always seem to stop just when it feels like you're getting into the flow of things, and that's odd, but it doesn't kill the game or anything. There's a lot to like about the non-fighting parts of the game, too. Like, for one, it's amazing looking. Like, pretty much every place you go has some amazing vista or interesting visuals. The designers clearly had some fun digging into the weirder corners of the Marvel Universe to create some of the stuff in here. The entire presentation obviously owes a lot to James Gunn's movie, but some of the most interesting stuff is totally unique to the game. And I gotta mention, it has probably the best model dog ever in a video game so far, so that deserves some serious kudos. Like, the level of detail in some of these environments is staggering. Like in general, it's just an all-around really good-looking game. We did experience a few visual hiccups and some weird little bugs here and there. Like, weapons would appear in characters' hands when they're not supposed to. And we, I mean, did experience some really bad FPS drops in certain sections. But not so much that it really matters. It's just happened a few times, and for the most part, it was also bug-free in terms of our experience with this game. And we really really have to mention the music. This is a Guardians of the Galaxy game, so you gotta expect some needle drops. And there is a really extensive soundtrack here, with the expected top 40 80s hits and a surprisingly good score. The licensed music choices aren't as inspired as the songs selected for the movies. Like, it's all stuff you've heard in games before, but there's a pretty solid selection of songs here. Probably the best way to sum this up is our expectations were absolutely rock bottom, but this game managed to surprise us. If you're a Marvel fan or someone who loves linear cinematic action games, it's basically a no-brainer recommendation, regardless of if you're one or the other. It's a great Marvel game. It is a great linear cinematic action game. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. And it takes a while to really get going. But once you
once you've got access to all the guardians and the game lets you cut loose, it is an extremely large amount of fun with some really, really inspired sections that are sometimes broken up by some areas that feel a little ordinary between fights and some of the humor can be a little annoying, but I think for the amount of times I've mentioned it within the scope of this before you buy, I've overrepresented it. Like for the most part, everything just works how it's supposed to, which is great. The characters are endearing, story's a little strange, intentionally and good, and it's got some pretty wild and surprisingly dark twists. The combat system feels totally unique, especially for a AAA action game like this one. Like overall, I can't help but say I recommend this game. It is, it's a unique experience. It brings a lot to the table and I think you'll enjoy it. But that's what we have to say about it. Your opinion's relevant here as well. So leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now is a good time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is of course a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.